Hello everyone and welcome to the first lecture in the series Python Intermediate to Expert. In this lecture, I'll be telling you about Python standard utility modules. Okay, so the first module we are going to talk about is OS. OS module in Python provides functions for interacting with the operating system. And there is a port portable way of using operating system dependent functionality inside your Python script. Okay, so now let's talk about some commonly used functions from the OS module. The first function we are going to talk about is os.getcwd. This function returns the current working directory, which is abbreviated as cwd, or the file which is used to execute this code. So here I have written the demo code for this, and I have also actually written this using the text editor atom, and I'll show you the code on the text editor. <coughs> So here, as you can see, in the first line, I'm importing the OS module. Then I am printing the current working directory. And lastly, in here in the comments, I've written os.path.absolutepath and in parenthesis, I've given the argument as dot. So this will print the absolute path of my current working directory. Okay, so now let's run this and see how it works. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the absolute path. I've got the current working directory, sorry, uh, in which I'm currently operating. And you can see it matches the one which is written in blue here. It might be slightly difficult for you to see it on YouTube, but trust me, it does match. Okay, moving on, os.rename. So using this function, you can rename any file to your chosen name. But you can only do this if the file exists, exists and you have sufficient privilege permissions to edit the file. Okay, so I've written the demo code for this. In this file, I'm importing the OS module, then I'm creating a variable ft, which is equal to the old file name. And I'm just calling the rename function and giving it two arguments, the variable which has the old file name and the new file name. Okay, so before doing that, I would just like to show you that here I have a text file with the zero to hero with python.txt name and inside of here I have a word test written just for proof later on. <laughs> okay, let's run this and see. So as you can see, this code ran without any errors. Now we would expect the file to be renamed and as you can see, I've got a file called newname.txt, which has the same contents as before. Okay. So we can say that this function worked. Okay, now coming to the second module, math module. So in this math module, number of mathematical operations can be performed with ease. So now let's talk about some commonly used functions using which you can perform some common operations. So the first operation, a ceiling and floor operation. So the ceiling will return the smallest integer, which is greater than your current number, and floor will return the greatest integer smaller than your current number. Okay, and here is a demo code. I have written the same in Atom. So I'll show it to you there. Yeah. So the first time I'm importing the math module, then I'm declaring a variable called temp and giving it the value 3.14. Then I'm just simply printing out the ceiling and the floor of the same. Okay, so given a value 3.14, the ceiling would be 4 and the floor would be 3. And we expect to get the same as output. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Math. Yeah, so here you can see we've got two outputs, 4 and 3, which correspond to what we were expecting. Great. The next. We have the f abs and the factorial function, which will help us to find the absolute value of the number and the factorial of the number. I've written the function demo function for the same demo file for the same. Sorry, here I'm importing the math module, initializing a variable temp to the value minus 3.14. Then I'm printing its absolute value and I expect to get positive 3.14 as output. Then I'm giving the value 3 to the variable temp and I'm printing its factorial. Okay, so let's see. 
and yes indeed it ran as we as expected the first output we got was positive 3.14 and the second we got was 6 which is the factorial of the number 3 then we have copy sign which returns the value a number with the value of its first argument with the sign of the second argument and the other function we have is gcd which will return the greatest common divisor of the two numbers okay so here we have imported the library and declared two variables temp1 and temp2 with the values minus 21 and 7 then we are calling the copy sign function with the first argument equal to temp1 and the second temp2 which is minus 21 and 7 respectively so we expect the answer, the output to be positive 21 and finally we are calling the gcd function again with two arguments temp1 and temp2 so the greatest common divisor of these two variables is 7 and we expect to get the same okay, so let's see whether we were right and yes we were right so the first value we get is 21 and the second we get is 7 which corresponds to what we were expecting a thing to keep in mind is that copy sign will return your number as a float so you can later convert it to an integer if you want to do the same then the exponential and the logarithm function so the exponential simply returns the value of e raised to the power which you supplied as the argument and the logarithm gives uh, if your first argument is a and the second b it will give you the log of a with the base b great so let's see here i've written the code to do the same and let's run it so yeah the first output we got was 148.413 etc so on which is the exponent which is 5 to the e to the power 5 sorry and the next is log of 21 to the base 7 which is 1.5645 etc great moving on we have log 2 and log 10 which is simply the value of log or the argument we gave to the with base 2 and base 10 respectively and i've written the file to do the same sorry here and if we run this so yeah, we get an output 2.32 and 0.69 which is log of 5 with the base 2 and log of 5 with the base 10 great and we have power and the square root functions so when you use power with two arguments it will uh, it will multiply it will give the power which is specified in the second argument to the first argument or it will raise the base of the first argument to the power specified in the second and square root is simply the square root of the argument okay and if we run them we get 1.125.2 and 2.23 which is 5 cube and square root of 5 respectively great so now we had we are done with the math module and now let's continue with the random module so the random module provides functions for generating or manipulating random numbers and these functions are very important in games, simulations, etc. So let's talk about some commonly used functions from the same module. Great. So the first module for sorry, the first function we want to talk about is the choice function. And it will return a random number from the container given as argument. The container here is given as a list. So you can have as many items you want in the list and this function will output a random element from this list. Second function we want is a rand range function. So it will return a random number from the range you specified. This works much in the same way as the range function, which is used with the for loop. Okay. So this is the file to demonstrate the functionality. Okay, so the random item we played from this list was 5 and the random number from this range was also 5, which is surprising. So what you will notice is if, if we run the same program again, we get different outputs. 
each time oh. that is because this process is random you don't have any control over the thing but it turns out that you do have control <laughs> some sort of control so we discuss about two functions here the random function and the seed function so the random function will return our a random positive float number less than one and the seed maps the random numbers which it generates further on to the seed which you have specified as the argument okay so i have written a file to demonstrate the working okay and if we run this file you see that we get three different random numbers and this is because we have specified two different seeds we first generate a random number then we specify a seed then we generate another random number then we specify a different seed and finally we generate the third random number so yeah as you can see since this process is random the random numbers will most probably be different each time okay so let's move on and talk about the shuffle function and the uniform function so the shuffle function will return the input list after shuffling and the uniform function will generate a random floating point number between the number you have specified as the arguments okay so here i have written a file to demonstrate the uh, functionality of the shuffle and uniform functions and now let's see if they work as expected okay so here random dot shuffle with this one two three four five as list will return me a list which is shuffled and this uniform with the arguments one and ten will return a random float number between one and ten and here i've got 1.81 etc so as you can see if i run this multiple times i get different outputs and that is because randomness is involved okay so now let's talk about the last module time module so the time module as expected <laughs> handles time related tasks so if you want to use the functions you obviously have to use the statement import time so that you can use the functions written in the time module and now let's discuss two or three commonly used functions from the time module okay so the first function we want to discuss is the time function and this ex expects no arguments and it returns the number of seconds passed since the epoch the epoch here is 1st of january 1970 000000utc okay so i have written a file to demonstrate the functioning so this in the first line i am putting the time module then i am initializing a variable called seconds with the with the seconds passed since the epoch and then i'm just printing printing out the same okay and now let's see if it works as expected okay so i've got this huge number <laughs> seconds passed since the epoch and this seems just about right because 50 plus years have passed since the epoch okay now the next function we have the c time function now this is the reverse actually the inverse of the time function this takes as input the seconds passed the numbers of second passed and it will return to you the time okay so here i have written a sorry a demo function to demonstrate the functioning i have initialized a variable called seconds with the value that i just got earlier 1 5 triple 9 etc seconds and then i am passing this variable as argument to the c time function and i am printing the result so let's see what time we get we expect to get the current time okay yes and we actually have got the current time september 12th saturday 4 30 second 4 pm 30 seconds great now the last function we want to talk about is the sleep function and the simply X suspends the execution of the current program for the seconds you specify as an argument. Okay, and here I have written the function to demonstrate uh, the file to demonstrate it's working. So I am printing a statement and then I am suspending the execution for 3.14 seconds and then I am just printing a statement again. Okay, so 
let's see if it suspends okay it has printed one two three and yes after 3.14 seconds approximately it has printed out the second statement okay so that's all i had for you in this lecture i will see you in the next lecture take care bye